just a little bit east of us here, I think just about like that ridge where the San Andreas Fault comes through here. And uh, it comes on shore, just the southern part of Fort Ross, and then continues uh, several miles inland all the way up to just north of uh, Point Arena. It goes back offshore again. So this land that you're standing on right now is on the west side of the San Andreas Fault. So you're actually on the Pacific Plate, where land is exposed on the Pacific Plate is known as the Selenian Block. It's pretty unusual in that it's moved north along the San Andreas Fault for hundreds of miles, maybe 350 miles. So this rock has been moved quite a, quite a ways from where it originally started, where these rocks were deposited. I thought maybe we would start by walking over to Gersel Cove and maybe kind of examining Gersel Cove a little bit and looking at some right off and we look at some rocks and some cultural stuff. And stone, this sandstone that was deposited how many years ago? Millions of years. 40 to 60. 40 to 60 million years ago, this, this sandstone was laid down as a sediment in the, in the late 1800s. A small ship came into Salt Point with pull in to navigate their way in here into Gerstle Cove to do commerce. By that I mean there was a stone quarrying operation that was started here. There's a rock up here that was drilled and split and then left. Why did they leave that rock there? It's all beautiful and split and really nice. This Tafoni or honeycomb weathering. It's a form of chemical weathering. There actually is some controversy about how these uh, features form, but the most generally accepted explanation for it is that salt crystals, because of evaporation of these, uh, you get sea splash on these rocks, and then evaporation happens, and you get salt deposits on the rock surface, and the formation of the salt crystals actually displace some of the the cement and the underlying sand and creates a depression and then by repeated wetting and drying and salt crystal formation you end up with this honeycomb pattern that forms called Tafoni. This is a great place, another great place to dive or, or wade and just with a snorkel and a mask and just walk around in these in this shallow water here. There's all kinds of rockfish and sea anemones. And beauty. Beauty. Palm kelp growing out there on the on these rocks. That stuff is amazing how it withstands the pounding of surf and how it has glued itself to the surface of the rocks. The Navy was trying to figure out how does palm kelp produce uh, this secretion that allows it to withstand these heavy, heavy pounding waves that, that can come in here. place is called Salt Point. We can find salt. Now why is it Salt Point? Well because this from here kind of along this northern section of the coast right here is where the Kashaya used to come and gather salt. Seawater splashes up into these little pools and then the sun evaporates the water and leaves crystals of salt. And, and salt was a really valuable resource to trade for resources that they had in the inland, like, like obsidian. So it was a really important tool. It's pretty salty, but very good. And so the salt point is right here. 